So just when you think, you know, like everything's life's going to be easy and you can just sort of like, you know, sleep in and kind of do your thing. Corey starts doing these Zoom things, right? And so I get kind of like slowly sucked in. <laughs> and then they kind of come to this point where they go, wow, Scott, Scott has some, like he, he has friends in skating that we could do like a cool thing on Friday, every, every, every Friday, really? And so it's like fun and it's yeah. fun. But it's what, what's fun about it is like, you know, we just sort of like start, you know, we kind of get into whatever we talk about because all of our skaters, you know, are on. I don't know how many are on. There's 26. Hi, Tanith. How are you? Oh, there we go. Muted? No, we're, we're good now. Hi. Sorry, okay. guys. I'm oh, here. The, you guys are pros. You've got it locked down. You know, you've got <laughs> curtains closed. You've got, you know, just the earbuds in. I guess this these and you've got your airpod pros i use those but i, I hear myself too much and so it's like <laughs> I, I can't get used to it so i like i use i go old school right with their airpods but we do this thing every friday and we just talk to people and we talk about skating we talk about life and career and we just kind of just hang out you know but what's really fun about you guys is that like you guys like are it like you <laughs> represent corporately everything that's great about american ice dancing right no they no don't be like oh well you know, you know uh, it's true it's like it's so stop true. it no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be like you know we, we've done we, I, you know we haven't really talked to anybody and, and, and dance has become so popular in our skating academy that it's like like duh like what yeah, we got to talk to these guys. So it's really cool. So we have a lot of different people. And I see my friend Josh. Um, Tana, do you remember Josh from Korea? He ran the yes. race there. Yes, so, amazing. Isn't that cool? So Josh <laughs> and I have remained very, very good friends. And uh, I told him about this. And he's kind of on lockdown in Germany. He works for the Paralympics organization. So he's in lockdown. He's like, ah, that'd be fun to do. I, I, I'll join in, you know. And so Josh is awesome and you know it's just I get all the WhatsApp messages from him from Germany and it's it's just he's here and he's been coming quite a bit and so we've got a broad representation of viewership so don't be nervous. It's too late. Oh. I'm sweating profusely. I, I knew I shouldn't have shared all that because you know now <laughs> you're gonna be like really super like controlled. You're not gonna you're gonna get yes and no answers and no, I'm not really comfortable talking about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just keep deferring. Well, you know, so so you know, for a lot of you know, most of our skaters, I would say I'd say like a vast majority of our skaters, you know, some have come in from out of town, but most of them took their very first steps with us. Right, so it's kind of like that whole like cliche learn to skate thing. Tan, if you're Canadian, you, you know you you just started skating at birth. So <laughs> 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 no, but I want to hear from like each of you. We'll start with Meryl. Um, like what got you into skating? I know you were done the lake, and you guys would skate outdoors in the winter. Is that kind of how things got started? Yeah, I grew up a block away from a lake in Michigan that froze over in the winter, and so we all like all the neighborhoods neighborhood kids um skated and you know played hockey you know sliding belly first into the hockey net kind of um and my only way to play <laughs> exactly and my, my parents put me in lessons when I was five and I was a super super I as I think many athletes probably are I was a very energetic kid and so I think mm -hmm. that having an outlet for my energy was was nice for them and I just as far as I can remember I fell in love with it immediately and uh, my mom loves telling the story. Um, there was a, a growing up a Detroit skating club, of course, a lot of really world-class coaches. And when I was six or seven, I walked up to one of like the top coaches in the club by myself and said, I need private lessons. And he no. took me by the hand no. now. And he took me yeah. by the hand and said, let's go find your mom. And, and said, <laughs> let's go find your checkbook. Years, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, um, I ended up taking lessons from his wife for many years and uh it, it just yeah skating just as soon as i started i was just like yep this this is where it's at for me I found that, it's it. like it's like it's like its own 
like, like, you know, we talk, we talk about it, like, you know, um, like when you get a jump, right? When you finally get around your axle, it's like every cell in your body just sort of shifts. It's like, okay. oh, like everything's changed, you know? It's like, yeah. uh, and like, it's like when you just get into skating, you realize the freedom and the speed and the joy and, and how you can watch yourself getting better all the time. And it is, it's kind of like, okay, I give me more of this. And yeah. I don't know about you, but my my parents had to threaten me to get me off the ice. I didn't start so yeah. much later, but um, it was really fun. Tana, how did you get, what were your first steps like? Uh, so you're right, I was really young, so I can't quite remember. Um, I was only two when I started skating, but uh, my mom was a coach, so she always says, it was cheaper than a babysitter <laughs> to have <laughs> Yeah, me rink rat, right? For sure, 100% rink, rink rat. I worked at the concession stand at my first rink when I was like nine years old. Um, so I was there. So was that all... in Kingston or was that in Quebec? That was in Quebec, like outside of Quebec. Yeah, in, in the West Island of Montreal. So, um, you know, it was at the rink. As soon as I wasn't in school, I was at the rink. And I've always felt like it chose me. Um, it's hard to feel, you know, there was a point when I moved to the U.S. where um, I was 13 turning 14. That was the first time that I felt like I really had to um, take some responsibility on my own and say, is this something that I want to do and yeah. I'm going to make it worth it for, for myself, but also for my parents to make that kind of sacrifice. So that was sort of the first time that I felt like I was really making a conscious choice of choosing skating um, at, at that competitive level. But it's just always been a part of my life. Uh, fun. And Charlie, was it hockey? Was that what got you into it? Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of started at the same time, actually, yeah. hockey and figure skating. And um, I think mainly it's just my, both of my parents grew up skating. And uh, I don't think that they had been able to enjoy it as much as they wanted to, um, mainly because they just hadn't taken lessons. And they remembered, like, going to the rink with friends and being embarrassed that they were stuck by the board. So they put me... <laughs> on the ice just so you know with the idea that someday i might be able to to go with friends and just have a nice relaxing easy time um uh, you know and so now like meryl tanith like we never really relaxed and just skated around the ring <laughs> um and i just i think i just enjoyed i was a speed demon uh, and um i just enjoyed how much faster i could go on the ice than i could running even and, and, I think and you know and you did really well in single Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, hockey, ice dance and singles. Um, I, it was, it just, there was something very natural about um, skating for me for whatever reason, which is great because well, yeah. I'm very average sized. So. <laughs> well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you did like, you were on the podium at Novice Nationals, right? Yeah, I won intermediate men. I mean, that was, you know, that's a close second to Olympic gold, that intermediate men title. Um, yeah, that, that, was more than, <laughs> that was more than I ever did on the novice level. But I got to share something with you that I found because that, you know, in this kind of lockdown stay at home thing, I've, I've had time to like go through the probably 400 boxes that are in my garage all stacked up and not, you know, some are labeled, some aren't. And I found this. Now this is really important because this and this, like you can see. Oh, like wow. Right. This was my only dance award <laughs> yes. ever because we realized like, you'll see that there, there's two giant people next to the two little of us. And that's yeah. Edwa Smith. She's from Detroit area. And we went to Golden West in LA and we realized that there was only um, two uh, people in the uh, preliminary dance competition. <laughs> so we figured the trophies are really cool at Golden West. And so we could win a trophy if we go into ice dance. And so I don't know if you've ever heard of her. You might have, you may, may not. You remember Mabel Fairbanks, African-American skater, she um she went into the um a u.s figure skating hall of fame a few years ago but she was like uh she wasn't allowed to skate anywhere because of her color and, and she was just barrier after barrier after barrier and, and like people started looking after her and started teaching her privately or you know at different times when 
And she broke through and she became this incredible ice show star in, in um, Holiday and Ice in Europe. So she choreographed my ice dance routine. And um, wow, that's awesome. So we, so we came in third out of three. We were last. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great trophy. But you did something I could never do. And that's like, figure out novice men it's like i can never do that was, I, I, yeah i don't want to take too much credit i was in first place after the short program um <laughs> and uh so you can see i ended up in third it, miraculously because my long program was a disaster i think i fell on like four jumps and i vividly remember like popping and falling on a double axle at the very end of my program, right in front of the judges. And like, you know, when you're just like in such a rush and exhausted, you try to get up super quickly and then you just kind of like collapse. And so that's what happened. And I was just like, wow, I really let that one slip through my fingers. And uh, it's that well, it was those I mean, components scores. We only fell four times in your novice nationals. I fell five times in mine <laughs> and I was last. Like oh. nine out of nine last, and I tried for a week, and then uh, went back yeah. the next year and did the same thing. Yeah. So, Meryl, you were also a single skater too, right? For a while. Uh, for a while, <laughs> I did singles <laughs> until I was um, sixteen, maybe. And I, I think especially when ch I started skating with Charlie, I started getting really nervous for singles because I realized how much I preferred having someone else out there with me. <laughs> and um, you know, like I was fine at singles sort of and I think maybe Charlie and I had the same singles coach and I think maybe because we were skating together and Charlie was good at singles they were just like okay well Marilyn's good at singles too let's just keep this this thing going and um there were a few years there where I just remember being like I don't want to compete I don't want to do singles and I just like thinking back to those weeks before competitions and singles it was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, and I shouldn't have, um, you know, I, it's, 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 I will, I will say, I will the say. The voice is in my head. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, re, I'm reliving this right now, but, um, you know, the skills that I did learn in singles were really helpful for dance, and um, obviously, Charlie went further in singles than I did, but I think the fact that both of us did do singles until we were in our teens was really helpful for us um, in terms of our ability to do certain moves and, and sort of think the same way um, dancing together. But I, I did, I think I competed in novice ladies sectional, maybe junior ladies sectionals. And I remember for weeks before competing, like, I don't want to go, I don't want to compete mm -hmm. singles anymore. And my short program was okay, but in my long program, I fell on every, it wasn't a, one of those, like I really gave it my all and I fell. I like, I threw myself into the air and sort of collapsed on every single jump because I just was, did not want to be there. And I got off the ice and I think everyone was like, okay, so no more singles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just spare you the pain and agony. You know, it's like, some things never go away. You never forget that stuff, right? Tanith, did you ever do singles or were you doing right into ice dancing? I did, I started out with a little, a little bit of everything, but I did ice dance starting around seven years old. But started as a single skater, uh, picked up pairs, which was my first like real competitive pursuit um, when I was 10 years old. It was before my growing spurt, obviously. So <laughs> it was a lot more compatible then, but I really appreciated um, trying all the disciplines and doing pairs to help give me a better understanding of um, body control when in the air doing lifts and things like that. It was definitely helpful for dance, um, but I did not have an affinity for jumping. Um, in fact, I had one of those wraps, you know, where they say like, you don't need a belt because your leg will hold up your pants. Like, <laughs> I had a really established wrap that was going to be, it was going to be hard to get rid of. <laughs> but yeah, I, but everybody gets it because we're all yeah, skaters. Totally. Here, right? But you know, like in a real skating joke, um, ridiculous thing, I was outside gardening the other day and I told Charlie, I was like, you know, when you pull a weed out really right out by the roots, it feels like when you land your first jump clean. <laughs> just like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh man, you're such a skating nerd. <laughs> it, but it's, you, it's like, there's nothing that compares. I I'll mean, never have to pull this weed again. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's like, but, yeah, I'll never have to fall in that jump the same way again. You know, it's like I mean, ice, ice dancing is amazing for so many reasons, but I can't find a comparable 
experience in ice dance to landing like your first axle, you know, like getting your first clean rocker doesn't quite feel <laughs> as exciting yeah. as a child. Um, no, so yeah. I'm glad I yeah, had that experience. I remember all those. It's like, and again, it's like every cell in your body just changes, right? It's like, you just feel it. It's like this whole, like you get around in your first axle. It's like, <gasps> I know what it feels like now. Yeah. Now I, you know, and then you just want to do it again and again and again. I remember I felt like a year and a half, two years, double axle, just trying to get around it, just trying to get around it, just trying to get around it. And it was just kind of this running joke. It's like, oh, here we go. Another 50 fall session for Scott trying to get around <laughs> double axle. And then one day I hit it and it was like, yeah. bing, mm -hmm. everything changes. Everything mm -hmm. changes. And it's kind of like finding that right partner right like charlie Mer you were together from day one but but tanif you had several partners going through right so tell me about your first couple partners yeah um so when i was seven i had a little partner um you know we we competed for a couple years together it was great for the most part i was height wise outgrowing my partners and that <laughs> happens a lot early on i think with younger teams where um, the girls are maybe are growing at a different rate than their male partners are. So I think that happened pretty routinely. And that was the case for the most part. Um, and then a lot of the times I wound up with partners who were several years older than me um, and trying to sort of live up to that standard. And then when I decided after pairs was definitely not my path to continue ice dancing and to do it more seriously, my coach in Canada said, well, then you've got to go to Igor Spielbahn. Um, you've got to go to Detroit and you've got to go see Igor Spielbahn, whom I'd never heard of at that point. I was young and not really involved in the coaching scene yet, but um, he, yeah, he sent me out there to do a tryout with Igor and shortly thereafter, Igor sent me a video of Ben um, and Ben was, it was his, I think a novice program. It was great balls of fire. <laughs> um, and I remember there was, he was doing lunges across the ice and playing the piano and like really animated, not surprisingly. And I was like, seriously. Um, and he, he was just, you know, born a dancer from the beginning. Yeah. So I, like you said, you couldn't have gotten luckier. And I just teamed up with him and immediately realized, um, you know, what could be accomplished. Um, Easily one of the nicest people to ever be in our sport. 100%. And always... I remember, I, do you remember that exhibition you guys did in Oxnard in California? Yes. That was one of the first times I remember really like being yeah. around you guys. And you did that Elvis number. Yep. That was, that was Classic. really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was great. We so, said that uh, Ben is our barometer for, um, you know, if like, if it rarely happens, but if Ben is like not so sure about someone, we're like, well, we have to steer clear of them. Because yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> if Ben doesn't like you, then there's really something off. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Labrador retriever. Exactly. Like yes. Yes. Oh, they're emitting evil or something. It's really bizarre. So, um, Marilyn, Charles, you guys got together like super young. And you and they put you in. Wait, I I read. I, you know, who knows what's on Wikipedia? But I read that um, Charlie, you you were put into ice dancing so you'd get more musical and understand better how to. Yeah, perform. yeah. I had a tendency to skate around the rink like I was still in hockey pads um, <laughs> because I had such a love for for speed and it just let you know any kind of artistry. I didn't even accept artistry into my being until I was about seventeen. Um, but the, but the, yeah, I, I, I really needed to, um, I really needed to sort of come to terms with like what a skater looks like to, um, to continue progressing. Um, and, and ice dance, I think was just a good way to set more boundaries. Um, in, in singles, you know, obviously you have the choreography, but there's a lot more leeway because you can. Yeah you're not you I want to go over there I will yeah you can you're accountable to, to yourself exactly and um I took full advantage of that um and so yes I, I um so then once I started doing ice dance and like there's a pattern you know that you need to follow on the ice and there's timing and there's specific steps and if you don't Ugh. do them you don't pass the that test that's awful um, <laughs> um in a weird way it's really fun and um <laughs> And so, yeah, so then when, when Meryl and I started skating together, um, you know, we, I think we both just had a natural affinity and the right attitudes from our parents and the right coaching. And, um, 
and in the way that like you kind of um it just there's a there's a natural feel when you land the the axle that you're saying it's just like yeah when you when you get that right spot um in the partnership with the right person i think it just it definitely just how lucky clicking. how lucky yeah now, no. did you feel that or were so you like lucky. freaking out because you have this crazy wild kid bouncing off the walls and now somehow either you have <laughs> to keep up with him or tame him how did that go well, I, no i loved it um we I had never danced before I tried out with Charlie and I didn't understand, I think I was nine. And I, even at the time, I didn't understand the difference between ice dance and pairs. And so I was just a single skater doing my thing. And they, and um, Charlie's coach at the time said, you know, why don't you try out with this little boy and had no idea what we were doing. Um, but I, I really liked it right away. Although Charlie and I didn't really speak much for the first couple of years we enjoy, we really enjoyed skating together and, and learning all of these new things and, and being a part of this team where we were learning things every day and yet I think we didn't really understand what ice dance was or what even was happening for probably a solid two years um, but but like you said I think one of the things that piqued our interest right away with ice dance was we did we had relative success pretty early like you know you said you hey we can get a trophy and I think Charlie and I both were really focused on singles and um having some success early on sort of really um I think was the catalyst for for us feeling as though there, there was something there and I think um after that was we started peeling back the layers of what I, what is ice dance really and then we started to really understand why we enjoyed it so much mm -hmm. But I mean, how, how fortunate that you, your temperaments sort of lined up and, and you instantly had a mutual respect for each other. You know, I mean, absolutely. And, I that, mean and that's kind of what makes longevity happen, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it's even, especially now, maybe looking back, it's just crazy because our parents still live maybe eight minutes away from each other. Yeah. Um, and growing up skating at the same rink. And like Charlie said, our parents had a very similar philosophies on, you know, finding that balance between school and skating and just all the right things came together for sure. Wow, that's awesome. And, and you just like the results, did they start happening right away? Um, I think our first year skating together, we got second at the, what was called the Junior Olympics at the time, so mm -hmm. that's Junior Nationals, basically. So yeah, I mean, I think pretty, pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> and I see Charlie laughing over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, so it's like your first year, like, you intermediate and, wait, ju juvenile dance, intermediate dance, you guys were rocking it. And then novice you still did well but it was that first year in juniors where you kind of hit the snag a little bit How, what was, was that a setback or was that a learning experience even in novice uh, i'll just say and then i'll let charlie sort of take this one was um seeing the photo of you scott when you were dancing and you're so much smaller than all of your competitors that was i think um for us for juvenile and intermediate we were we felt as though we were kind of um, among peers, but we got to novice really quickly. And I think we were maybe like eight years younger than most of our competitors. So you see those early photos of us, our first couple of years novice, and we were, we were a little in over our heads at the time. So um, yeah. definitely novice was a bit of a, a bit of a, a big step for us. So the only reason I wanted to win was so I wouldn't have to look up that far. <laughs> the person sitting on the first place. At least I was on, I level with the guys that I was competing against if I won, but if I didn't, then it was like, oh man. Oh, I think I, one of the, one of the thing, like, so we, we got second at our first like nationals in juvenile and then we moved up to intermediate and we won, um, we won intermediate. And so we were just, um, I think that like with that success, we, we weren't comparing ourselves very much to the other teams. Like it just, you know, we, we didn't know the other skaters very well. Like they came from all over the country and, um, and so we were kind of just doing our own thing and, and, and it was, I, I can't remember for sure, but maybe it was like Lake Placid competition where there's a famous, um, dance competition there every year. And, you know, we stepped on the ice or in the locker room and we were 11 and we were competing against like high school juniors. 
And, you know, in ice dance, it's like a big part of it is your performative ability. Even just like yeah. how mature you look can sell a piece of music. And yeah. um, we were skating very fast and our toes were pointed and we were doing good edges, but like we looked, we would have looked so, I can't even imagine, like we would have looked so out of place. <laughs> um, and so it was, it was tough, of course, to like get destroyed. Uh, you know, when we felt like our skating skills weren't, weren't that far behind everyone else. And, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it made us, um, it made us sort of take a step back and, and be forced to understand at a young age and obviously help with the, um, with our parents helping us with our coaches, like being like, you know, don't, don't get impatient. You know, this is yeah. part of the, there's a process. And so we had to, we had to go through this process and, and learn to be patient because up until that point, it hadn't been necessary. And, um, and so then finally, we kind of got to the top of novice, and then it just hit us again, sort of, um, although not as hard, in, in junior, where we were still, like, by far the youngest. We were 14 competing in uh, junior Grand Prix with, you know, our Russians who were 6'2", and it just, it felt yeah. like a Rocky movie, if it was, yeah. like, Rocky Yeah, they junior just do that to versus, intimidate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did, um, that, uh, that competition Charlie's referring to, the Lake Placid Ice Dance Challenge, was just, it was, like, the ice dance competition every summer, and our first time showing up, and I, I love our moms even more for this, our, our moms just didn't really understand ice dance in the most endearing like beautiful way and we didn't know we didn't know that's one understand. way to put it yeah <laughs> didn't, we, didn't, we didn't understand like you know when you're a nice dance even if you're 12 like you know you wear your costumes and the presentation is, is a big part of it and um our mom <laughs> they went out and got us matching old navy polar fleece vests <laughs> so that we would look like we match <laughs> <laughs> it was just like it just is the most beautiful, like endearing. I think just that was their perspective. <laughs> I, mean, I, I love that, and it, like you know, we show up and we're matching polar princess, and all of our competitors are wearing their like rhinestone costumes and they're in makeup, and like Charlie said, they're like eighteen, and you know, <laughs> we're these little ten or eleven year old kids in our matching old navy polar fleece vests, and. Mm -hmm. It just, I, I love, I love that part of our career. And it, yeah. at the time, I, I remember going into the locker room crying and being like, mom, like no one else is wearing an old baby. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but now, like, I just, I, I really feel like that was just such a, it was reflective of their beautiful perspective on, on just like wanting to give their kids an opportunity without really thinking about you know the competitive aspect of it and like what what's everybody else doing now tanith um when, how old were you when you and ben got together what 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 about were you on the senior level junior level where were you guys when you got together we started competing at junior so um i moved to skate with ben the summer i turned 14. Um, so ben would have been 16 and we skated a whole year together before we competed um, which was the best um, yeah. gift that uh, Igor could have ever given us, our coach, mm -hmm. um, was just forcing us to do that. I think that very few people um, have the faith and the patience to, um, put, to put into a new partnership that way. But um, when we moved, we knew that we were moving and making all of these changes for Igor um, because we believed in his talent so much. So when he told us this is what it would take to set the right foundation, we just agreed. Um, it was difficult as teenagers to accept uh, just like the hours and hours of stroking while everyone else gets to do fun programs but um it was definitely worth it and then our first competition was Lake Placid the same event that Marilyn Charlie I, I mean we were probably there at the same time um in like 99 and yeah. so yeah we competed junior at Lake Placid we won our first competition we went straight onto the junior Grand Prix um so also extraordinarily blessed from you know starting a junior and then I've never actually I've never done regionals or sectionals in the states um never done it in my career so that was Whoa, really? straight to nationals to get away with that. it's not too late yeah, yeah. it's not too late <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I always went to you know I always went to regionals always yeah always and I always went to sectionals always and it was like I just felt like they were because we didn't have a grand prix like circuit back then really right. I mean it was there was international competitions, but I still felt it was 
important to do regionals, um, you know, because it was good for the skating club, the host cities, you know, it was good. East, it was also really good to get a couple of the stinkers out of my way, you know, like the programs that maybe, uh, but you can kind of like mess up a little bit there and you're still going to be okay. But it, it puts you in that competition where I, like I, I would always get scared of going straight to nationals. It would be like, no, I need a couple like, you know, eh, ones before I get there. But you never did any of that. No. What could, did you, were you out of the Detroit Skating Club? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and obviously huge benefit being able to train with really competitive ice dancers, the most competitive um, club at the time in the country. So we had a good idea of what it was going to take. Um, and so there was an, enough of a competitive atmosphere at home, I think, that it groomed us to be prepared to take that stage quickly. Um, but having said that, I feel like we had our um, knockdown moment when we turned senior, um, whereas Marilyn Charlie, you know, <laughs> going into novice, like we were- we, And junior. We were thinking we were doing really well, <laughs> and then we went senior, and our first world um, was pretty disastrous. So to think that like, you know, we always wind up mostly on the podium to like, no, no, you're 17th at best. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I see now. <laughs> it's, it's, t it's tough. For, I mean, like, we're so spoiled. Se you know, 17th in the world is like, it's pretty good. But but from, from where we we're coming from and, and who they and us, we we're training together at the time uh, on the same rink, like with, with, with what we understood and with, I think, what we appreciated, you know, the coaching and the natural talent, it was just like, you know, it seemed like we should really be shooting higher. Or, yeah. yeah, well, and, and, and again, that's great to have that around you, yeah. right? And it's like, oh, that's what that looks like. Oh, that, you know, I, I skated with Carlo Fossi in the years that it was like, oh my goodness, they had, you know, skaters from all over the world there and they were all really good, you know, like Robin Cousins and Ronnie Shaver and Susan Driano and Emmy Watanabe and, um, uh, uh, Lynn Nightingale is a Canadian champion back then and it's like wow I'll never be that good like <laughs> I can't imagine being that good but at least you know it sets kind of the bar where you kind of know where if you're if you're in a small town in a small rank with limited coaching you really don't have any kind of like thermostat right you know I gotta turn it up a little bit in order to get to you know the desired um, result but and you guys, you know, Igor, I want to buy the rights to his life story and just make a movie out of it because that's insane what he what he endured. And like all he had was a video camera skates and nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And he just started teaching. And he, he's the first coach in ice dance history to sweep a podium at Worlds. I mean, <clears throat> insane. So you guys, were, you were coming up, Tanith and Ben, and you guys were setting the mark i mean you guys like from that it was like you guys were really in the game and you were changing the image of american ice dancing especially at that time you guys were like crushing it like nobody had ever crushed it before oh thank you <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's not take bad, it run with it man. True, right? well run i was just it. thinking to myself was that you know american ice dance always had such um incredible leaders whether or not they always had um the the path to get through to the highest ranking internationally you know naomi and peter um you know were already to us and we were training with them every day such phenomenal competitors who had their own style who were trying to push the envelope and were just maybe not to the the results that everyone thought they deserved same can be said for liz pencil and jared swallow before them so we i i mean i know it's a it's a a cliched response in a way that we've said over and over, but we truly felt like this was just coming, um, that Igor had been leading those last two teams ahead of us, pushing them, trying to get ahead of the curve. And then I think when Ben and I came together with Igor, it's just the timing was right for all around, you know. Yeah. Judging Amazing how those that's, accidents yeah, that, that's can a, happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys were just doing that, you know, climbing the ladder at the World Championships. Now, when they were doing that, were you, you were obviously, uh, Marilyn and Charlie, you were really aware of everything that Ben and Tanith were doing, right? Let's start with Meryl. Tell me what you thought of, were they the mark? Were that, was that what you were trying to achieve? Yeah. Um, Charlie and I had trained at the Detroit Skating Club when Eagle was still there. And so when we were really young, just starting ice dance, 
we could sort of watch Tanith and Ben and Naomi and Peter and Liz and Jared and just get a sense of where we hope to go someday. Um, at the time, it seemed unattainable and it seemed incredibly far away. Um, and then when Igor moved with Marina to Canton in 2004 or five, um, Charlie and I stayed at the Detroit Skating Club for a year or two. And so I think it was when we then followed um, to Canton in 2006 that we really understood um, the sort of like benchmarking and, and, and seeing like, okay, Tanev and Ben are, you know, we were watching them in Torino at the Olympics in 2006. And we thought, you know, we train with them every day. We know how hard they work. Um, we see every single day what we need to do to up our game and, and to get to that Olympic level. And so I think it probably wasn't until we moved to the Arctic Edge in Canton in 2006. Um, Charlie and I had just graduated from high school that we understood, you know, how fortunate we really were to have the world's best ice dancers like Tanith and Ben in our training facility and then learn from them on a daily basis. Charlie, same? Yeah, I think it was uh... – yeah, fortuitous. I mean, so many of the things that that we used to describe our career, um, you know, we we fall back on on a lot of these, you know, these sort of important moments and how it worked out for the best. And um, you know, certainly not to take away from how hard we worked or dedication, perseverance, and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, we really it re it was a real gift to be able to. Um, to, to constantly have in the back of our head this image of, um, you know, not so much like everything was perfect with the, the top teams or Tanith and Ben, but like we saw them training every day and we saw the commitment and we saw the, um, you know, just like all of the right ingredients from, you know, like being teachable and, um, and, and just always trying to do your best in practice. Yeah. And, and, how, work and, ethic. Then, yeah. exa the work, and to see how that translated, because, you know, we weren't competing at the same competitions they were. We were watching them on TV with everyone else. And to see mm -hmm. from up, up close and personal what their practice is and then how that was translating to competitions, especially against, you know, other top teams um, who were also incredibly talented and, you know, not to knock anyone, but they just weren't working as hard. And it was yeah. evident. And, and Nothing that was, replaces work. That's Nothing. right. And, and I tell so to that, my kids all the time, and they yes. go, well, if I can get everything I want on my phone. From this morning, it's like right here, right? <laughs> and I get it. Yeah, I get it. But um, I have to so say, here, on, the, on the flip side of all that, um, so when these guys moved in 2006, and um, I, I can't remember if Tess and Scott moved around they had, the They had moved the year before, before. So, but Ben and I went through the Olympics and then went on tour. Um, and we were on tour for a long time that year because it was an Olympic year. It was a huge tour. We were yeah. gone. Tommy would do that. Yeah. Yeah. So we were from, from Sausages. Straight, we're all straight, from, <laughs> straight from Worlds that year. We went on tour until the end of August. And yeah. so we showed up back at the rink and like a lot had changed in four months, including um, both Marilyn, Charlie, and Tessa and Scott, like we walked in the door and we saw them skating. We were just like, well, crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, like we just got to a point where we were aiming for, and you know how it is, you know, you're fighting and you're chomping at the bit to ascend that podium. And then the second you get any footing, you recognize how many people are right there ready to take it, you know? And so thank goodness, because if not for them, we wouldn't have had the, the motive, like we needed to find the motivation, um, to figure out what our direction was for the next four years. And man, what a difference. <laughs> just You're welcome. Yeah. I, 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 will, I, will say too, I think that the change in the judging system played a really big part in the way that we all sort of approached that time in our careers and, and ice dance was just changing in general. And so I think that, um, you know, for, for Charlie and myself in particular, up until that point, up until maybe 2000, 2005, 2006, we were getting a lot of like, okay, you know, you guys are really athletic, but like maybe ice dance isn't for you. And <laughs> ice dance really, ice dance really shifted to, to, um, you know, reward the more sort of athletic, the more um, acrobatic side of things at mm -hmm. that stage, which really um, was, was great for sort of what we brought to the table. And so I think, one of the really great things about what Igor and Marina were doing at that time was looking at the way that ice dance was going and, and sort of figuring out how to train their students 
for what I stand was, was about to become as opposed to what it used to be. Um, and so I think maybe even before, like probably 2005, um, four or five, six was when I think Igor and Marina really um, capitalized on understanding the judging system within the context of the change. And so I think all of us really benefited from their ability to interpret the changes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Tanith and Ben were really at the forefront of that. You know, I remember watching Tanith and Ben and we were all trying to understand what does this mean? What do these descriptions of the lifts and the elements mean that we had never really seen it that way before? Yeah. And I think that Tanis and Ben with Igor in particular were really at the forefront of sort of showing the ice dance world how to interpret the new rules and, and how things were changing. Well, I, and it's, it is, it's, that's so true because I remember those first years of the IJS you know, they, they'd be sitting there in the kiss and cry and they'd be like, you know, kind of like, yeah, 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 it went really well. And then, you know, watching their replays and then this girl would go up and the skater would go. <laughs> it's like, is that any good? I don't really know. I mean, where, where, <laughs> what is, is that good? And the audience would be going, okay, is that any good? I don't, I mean, what, is, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's like you guys, I mean, um, Tanith and Ben, you guys, you guys had what how many six o's or half of all six o's given out for ice dancing on the old old six o system i mean 14 of the 30 and and you know let's let's just say it the way it is from 1976 the very first ice dance championship at the olympics where milnes and o'connor Jim Milnes lived two doors down from me in the dorm in 1976 when they went to the Olympics that year and won the bronze medal. Nobody had medaled until you guys did in Torino, right? I mean, it's like 30 years <laughs> later. But I mean, you know, it just shows because it was, there was almost this kind of like, yeah, that's the American style or that's the North American style. And, and I know we're into this. This is what we want. And it really, you know, like they had the Duchesnais, you had all these different people and, you know, like Torvald and Dean came in and they started like mixing it up a little bit and kind of breaking down the whole Soviet dominance thing. And that was all really exciting, but North American skating, uh, not, you know, but you guys were so good that you just, okay, you wouldn't be denied. I mean, you couldn't be denied. And that 06, when you guys won the silver there, that was awesome. <laughs> that was really great and and then you know that goes I mean it just says everything about you know what you guys were as a team and what as a whole team with with Igor and Marina and and mm -hmm. you and Ben and how you guys sort of built your skating yeah and I, I you know Charlie touched on it and I feel like and I think that Marilyn Charlie in a lot of ways took this you know took this as well and, and took it much further than we could but we tr I think that what we tried to bring to the ice or what we knew made us special was how hard we knew we worked at home. And I feel like we skated, um, at the time anyway, we skated with the priority on just the energy, you know, just go all out 110% where other people will take more of a dramatic pause. Um, we just sort of focus on just pushing and pushing and cramming more complexity in where we could. It's it, our programs are, were not difficult by the standards of today by any means, but at the time, just making them really um, nonstop felt like yeah. it was something that was allowing us to break through just to say that we're willing to cram more into this and have the stamina to execute it. Um, it, it helped us stand out a lot. So it was just like Meryl said, it's that foresight that Igor and Marina had that really set the stage for all of us to succeed. So we get into seven, 2007. We're going to rush through this because I want to get to other stuff too. But so um, Marilyn, Charlie, your first year seniors, you're on the podium at, at and you were, you and Ted and Ben have something really important in common. You were the first ones to go from junior to the uh, national championship to the senior podium. Like who else has done that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Cause I'm not like, Alexa Ainsworth or anybody from NBC. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that, you know, it, it, it was there. It was like, okay, we have, you know, we have um, Tenth and Ben who are crushing it, who are just doing things that no American team has ever done before. And then you've got Charlie and Merrill coming up as, as sort of the year parent. And I remember in 2009 at the Worlds, because I, you know, I was watching the dance and it was really exciting. And, and um, 
And I was just like, I'm gonna go watch this in the truck. And so I went in the truck and I watched and the Russian team, how do I say this? Um, I wasn't impressed. And that's that's like, perfect. You can say that. <laughs> no, I wasn't, it, it wasn't my bag, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's my thing, right? And then I said, if 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 ten of them Ben don't win worlds, I'm never watching ice dancing again, ever, <laughs> ever. And so the Russians won, and I walked out of the truck, and I was I didn't sleep well that night because I was just so angry because I really felt you guys were the better team. No, there was a lot. And of you guys that were. were upset. You got Meryl Shaw, you were fourth that year, fourth, right? Yeah, was. yep, yep. You should have been on the podium. <laughs> Don't get him going on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows, he knows the number. Well, that I, he I, I, <laughs> yeah. Point zero four. We were off the Point podium. Zero four. <laughs> how do you even it's like point zero four seconds? It's like yes. what is that? Yes. No, That's how it felt. So Going into the 2010 season now, I know Ben had an injury, I think that prevented you guys from competing. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, and it was just a really kind of like a tough year, as I remember. Yeah, so we were, it was actually during 2009 season, 2008-2009, that Ben um, was out for the majority of the season. So we missed Grand Prix, um, Grand Prix final and nationals and for so worlds was like our first step back um, since his injury, but he wasn't 100%. And to be fair, we didn't feel like we skated our best in the free dance at those LA worlds in 2009. So although it felt like deep down, I, I really was telling myself like, this is your chance because in 2008 worlds, we felt like it really could have been ours and I fell in like the first 20 seconds of the competition and it was just crushing. And so yeah. 2009, after we were able to get back from the injury, it just felt like this could be my storybook ending. Um, mm. And it really felt like it was right there. But once I, when I finished the program and got off the ice, I knew we hadn't done our best. So um, it, it was harder in 2008 than it was in 2009. Um, I would yeah. have loved to have won, but we knew it wasn't our absolute best. So we had a lot of motivation from that to push forward. Um, but one of the reasons why deep down, I knew that was probably our last great chance at winning a world title was because Meryl and Charlie, they were right there. Um, you know, they were right there. They were ready. Yeah. <laughs> they were ready to ascend to the national, um, the top spot. Yeah. <laughs> and we knew, um, and then Charlie and I were, um, Charlie and I were dating, um, ah, that's in the Olympic season. So, it was, yeah, it was interesting, you know, because like, we didn't know if we were supposed to like, you want to share everything, but like, we didn't know if we were supposed to tell each other what we were skating to because in dance so much of it is like the reveal of your programs. And we have loyalty to our partners and our coaches and what we, you know, and so it was a bit like, there were some things that we tiptoed around because we didn't yeah. really know okay. how to navigate. It Hold yet. that. I want to go to Meryl. Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did how did how did that feel to know that your partner was starting to date your your competition? Was that odd? I mean, or, or is it na totally natural? Because when I I'll get to my my viewpoints of it, but how how was that for you back then? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm putting you right on. This is like this is you know, this is not like tabloid television. There's like what twenty six of us. No one ever sees this, but it's like. I was always fascinated by that. Meryl, how, how, what was going through your mind back then? So yeah, I'm sweating think, right now. I hate to ask these questions, but it's like, I have to. Uh, I don't, I don't, I've never been asked this question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was nine, or no, how old would I have been? Oh, and I was older. I was like 22 or 23, and I was a young 22 or 23, and I just, I think I just didn't fully understand. You know, I had never been in, uh, like a long-term relationship before and it was it was hard I think and um, you know especially now years later I just applaud the way Charlie and Tanith were able to handle it because the pressure like like Kenneth is saying of navigating that and trying to figure out how to navigate that when there's already so much pressure with competition and and, and sort of what we're all doing on the ice um, so it was it was hard but I think that um, Charlie and Tanis just handled it so well. And uh, I, like I said, I think I just didn't fully grasp. And then over the course of time, I think it was very apparent that there was something very, very real and very special there. And so 
I think as that became more apparent, it was a little bit easier for me, not that I had a place in it, but I think it was easier for me as Charlie's partner to, to celebrate it and support it as time went on because um, as obviously as I grew older and, and sort of was able to wrap my head around it, but also just, they just have such a beautiful, special relationship. So yeah, but it was, of course it was challenging at the time and, and their ability to go into an Olympic year, you know, as the top competitors from the same country, you know, vying for that same spot, just their ability to deal with it, deal with the yeah. pressure. Um, just amazing. And, and uh, yeah. I can't imagine going through that and, and what it must have done to build the strength of their relationship. Well, I remember we were um, held hostage in Spokane, Washington for like two weeks of that nationals because they had to split up all the events. And it was, I felt right. like I forgot it was that. a hostage situation. Yeah, right? that was. So I'm, I'm having breakfast and I'd always take all my research materials down and go through it, you know, when I eat and go over breakfast. Cause you know, I, you know, if, uh, nationals is not like, it's hard because there's so much of this going on all the time, you know, that I just sort of go down and put my, my, and if I got, if I'm working, people don't come up and just sit down and do all this. But you guys, um, Charlie Tan, you were at the table right next to me. And I was always, cause um, I heard that you guys started dating. I thought, what? That's interesting. How it's gonna work out, you know? And I, you know, I for me back then, I visit the sport like once a year, the nationals, and I kind of keep up with it, you know, throughout the season, or whatever. And I, I, I was just sort of I glance over every now and then just to kind of, you know, you guys were laughing the entire breakfast, and it was like, that is so awesome. <laughs> because yeah, I think that's it, our strength. That, that was yeah, no, strength. but I mean, if you if you can kind of like form your relationship in laughter, that it'll it'll always be there. I mean, there's there's always even in the tough times, it's going to be there. And and so watching you guys back then, it was like good for them. That is just the best thing ever. And it's like, and they all live happily ever after. Now, meanwhile, Meryl, you started. Was that when you and Fedora started dating or was that a little bit after that? This is really yeah, getting into like a dating thing. I never intended that, but why not? Let's just go with it. Yeah, Scott, this is Scott's, uh, he's going for the uh, Maury Povich show. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, this is stuff we never talk about when we're sitting around the air show. Yeah. Let's go there. Yeah, we, we started dating in 2011. Um, maybe late 2010, early 2011. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, Tana and Charlie pretty quickly, like, had a very serious relationship very quickly. Um, and I, I think that it was pretty apparent. I think they, there was so much to overcome in terms of like what you're saying, there was just a lot of pressure and they really had to fight, you know, to balance and, um, work at finding a way to embrace their relationship amid the stress of competing like just it just is it was a hard way to start a relationship I think and, and I think working through that so beautifully is a testament to just what a great couple they are um Fedor and I started dating and like I said I think 2011 and um we have been really good friends for a long time. so um a much, I think a much slower start um you know, more very, we just were very casually spending time together and our relationship built, um, you know, naturally over many years. Yeah. Oh, he's a great guy. I knew him when he was a little boy and I, I yeah. always liked, always loved him. A great, great, great young man now, a man. Um, yes. But so like, let's fast forward a little bit. So, <laughs> so guess where I was in 2014 while you guys were skating. <laughs> Yes, I, I still have the marks in my hand. <laughs> it was like, I was like, okay, all, you know how your fingers go white, you know, but you were just like, squeeze. we were both like so nervous and just so willing you guys through every step of your program. <laughs> and it was just like, she was, I think watching, you know, Tanith and Ben skate all those years, I think she was way more nervous for your performance at that Olympics than she ever was for one of hers. 
And <laughs> um, it really was. And because it, it was so out of your hands, right? It wasn't like we can go out there and just do it. It's like we're watching and we're sitting up in this platform that the Japanese television abandoned, you know. And, and so we got to sit up there and just watch. And it was just awesome. And, you know, you guys are Olympic gold medalists and, and, you know, really changed, you know, you took all of that momentum that was created and you, you, you just took it. And, and, and now I'm Tana's partner. <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> it was like, I, I don't know if, if you could tell Charlie, well, you got you. Maryland. You and Tana took our energy from 2014, and you brought that to the plastic ice in 2018. I that know, was I the plastic right. ice. We rocked the ring. <laughs> we did. It was just like that was it. But it's just you know all of it. I know we're wrapping up, but I just I just want to share this with you as kind of like a you know closing thought, and then if you got anything to add for our skaters that are watching, um, you know it's all rooted out of showing up every day. Um, it's all rooted out of approaching your craft honestly with, um, uh, you know, hunger, integrity, and also being aware of what's around you. I mean, you guys embody that, I, I guess, better than anyone because, you know, we're pioneers, you know, in American ice dancing, you guys kind of took it and elevated it. And now look at what it is. I mean, it's incredible what's going on in North America. It, it, it's all in North America now, right? So, you know, the one thing I love about you guys is that you guys, you lead with your heart that is um, driven by, you know, just this intelligence and this integrity and this kind of humble approach. Because anytime I've ever talked to you guys about your accomplishments, it's like, well, you know, and it's kind of like you try to like almost subdue it, almost like kind of, but it's spectacular. What you accomplished was, spec is spectacular. And it continues to this day in your broadcasting and, and everything that you guys approach. So I don't know if you have any last words for our little skaters. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think... Um... You know, I think that I think that we were all lucky to to um, have people around us that helped us maintain perspective um, and uh, a good balanced life um, while we were coming up. In that we we didn't project too much importance on what it meant to to stand on a podium with with a medal as much as um, you know what it meant to 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 be kind and generous and 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 being humble. I think was always part of that. Um, and it was really important for us to, to, when we were six, when we were, you know, sort of on the podium, like to, to be able to show that and, and have that be something that like, if I'm going to be a role model, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I am, I might be a role model, whether I choose to be or not. Um, and, but we, we, we really wanted to grab onto that and make it feel worth it. Um, well before the Olympics were, were a part of the equation, you know, and it was in interviews and, you know, backing up, it was, um, you know, even the way that we practiced, I think, um, when we talk about legacy and, and when young skaters thinking about, you know, what, what's my legacy going to be, it has very little to do ultimately, well, not very little, but like if you win the Olympics, like you're going to have a legacy, but um, the way that people remember you, the way they talk about you and the impact that you leave on the sport has to do with how you, how you um, speak with people, how you spend your time. Um, and I think, you know, the three of us are grateful to have had people like you, Scott, who, who frankly led the way. I mean, it's, it's, you know, to, to have, I still do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to have, to have heroes who, you know, that won the Olympics, but more than that, were just like really good people. And, oh, um, you. you know, and, and it's, we've been fortunate enough to be around the world and do cool things. And it's, it's rarer than it should be perhaps. Um, yeah. but it's absolutely worth, it's absolutely worth it. And it doesn't matter if you're at regionals in the locker room or at the Olympics stepping off of the podium. Like it, I think it's just a, like you said, it's, it's an integrity thing. And, and, you know, I think we're just grateful that, that we were able to, to find that in our sport from our parents, from our coaches and, um, so yeah, so and from thanks, your peers. Thank, so yes, and thanks. So thanks to you, and from and from each other, absolutely. Wow, we love you guys so much. And 
I'm just so happy for the lives that you've built, you know, outside of skating and little Charlie, I just can't, oh, he's <laughs> so cute. Man, you got a lot of, a lot of genetics and all those, you know, all you guys, you know, it's like uh, Meryl and, and, and Fedora, man, your kids are gonna, whoop. man, I, I can't even imagine, you know, it's like, it's like crazy. But, um, you know, I, I so appreciate your time and I, I I loved today so much, just so you know, hearing from you and just sharing because so many things, you know, we're together all the time. We're not all the time, but a lot. And we just don't ever talk about stuff like that. We just yeah, don't, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's just, we don't, but today we did. And um, so I, you know, I hope this blessed our skaters and I know, um, I know it did. Um, I need we have to a thank lot you of guys young ones. too. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so hey, much for Corey. these three amazing people on. So great to see you, Meryl, Charlie, Tana. Thank you for your wisdom and your insight. This was so awesome for us. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for everyone yeah. for, for listening. That and I'm going to find a really good place for this. Yes. <laughs> it should take the top spot, Scott. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm just decorating, so this works out great. Oh, great. Well, God bless you guys. And, uh, yep. Yeah, Corey's awesome. She's building a program here in a really profound way. And, and, come uh, visit us. Like, yeah, yeah, come see come us. We love us. that. The doors are open. Absolutely. We, we got a lot of kids that are interested in ice dancing. So, Good. right. So, yeah. Well, you've got, a, you've got one of our longtime best friends with you, Siobhan Karam. Um, love you know, Siobhan. Love hey, you. buddy. <laughs> Where have you been wow. this whole time? Um, Where have you been? You're going to your dad to ask us questions. <laughs> oh, he can't hear, can he? He's, he's can next. Hear. He's next. Yeah, All right, he's next. <laughs> yeah, he's next. He'll be running the show in no time. Oh, it's, good. You know, it's like getting here, you're here going, aren't you guys, aren't you done? Like, <laughs> We're done. Well, stay well. Stay away from Thank the you. little Thank critters you. that are you making too. the world sick. And um, yeah. can't wait to see you guys again real soon. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Soon. Love you so much. Love you guys. Thanks, everyone. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.